there goes Jack. And there goes Stephen. There's a severe turbulence forecast over Melbourne at the moment from the surface up to 7,000 feet. Now we can fly in it, it's very doable, but it's not going to be very comfortable. And ordinarily, I wouldn't fly on a day like today. But this is the last time I'm going to get to fly with the guys here in Moravian Airport for at least the next three weeks. So we want to make the most of it and we're going to head north to hopefully try and find better weather. Receive November, request taxi, 35 left, I fire departure by Melbourne. Okay, Kazulu, taxi on point alpha eight, runway 35 left. Only point alpha eight, 35 left, again Kazulu. I'm having to push my stick forward here because I've got the wind behind me. It's blowing over the aircraft and by pushing the stick forward, I move the elevator down. So the wind is less likely to pick up the tail as we're taxiing down here in a straight line. So when the wind's a lot stronger, you've got a few more things that you need to think about. Not just in the air, but when you're actually on the ground as well, taxiing around, there's a few more considerations when it's gusty like today. Okay, Xulu is clear to Mount Beauty via Melbourne Plant Route. Climb 3000, 3674 and passing 2500 decimal four. So that's my clearance. I've got I've only been cleared up to 3000 feet right in the turbulent layer. But um, hopefully once I speak to Melbourne after that I'll get to, I'll get higher. Rabbit Tower Echo Yankee Zulu is ready holding point Alpha 8 departure via Melbourne. Echo Yankee Zulu clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff Echo Yankee Zulu. That's because there's no one else here at Morabin because no one else is uh, well, very few other people are flying today. Okay. Let's give this a go. Power is full. Air speed's increasing. Temperatures and pressures are good. And we're up. Stations information, Oscar, wind 340 degrees, minimum 15, maximum at 35 knots, crosswind still up to 10, main QNH 1011. And there's the bumps already. 500 feet, caps is now available. Ugh. Make a left turn. Yikes. That is ugly, ugly, ugly weather. Bumble departures, Echo Yankee Zulu passing 2,600, climbing 3,000. Echo Yankee Zulu departures identified, climb 8,000. Climb 8,000, Echo Yankee Zulu. Brilliant. That's exactly what I wanted because if I was going to be held at 3,000, I'd be held in the bumps. But because air traffic control have cleared me to keep my climb going up to 8,000, it means I'll be in the bumps for less time. And to be honest with you, we're at 3,000 feet. I don't want to let go for too long, but yeah, letting go of the controls. We're actually, this feels so much smoother than it did on ground level. Okay, Yankee, so you request that level won't be available. I can offer you eight or 10,000, what would you prefer? I'm happy to take 8,000, Echo okay, Yankee Zulu. Echo okay, Yankee Zulu, thanks. Echo okay, Yankee Zulu, turn right now, heading 030. Right, 030, Echo okay, Yankee Zulu. I'll show you an interesting thing on the map. So I've just got that turn 030, that's uh, me. The, the little blue plane now, and the purple line is the direction I should be going in. So air traffic control obviously want me to get out the way of some traffic that's coming into Melbourne International Airport, which will be over in that direction from me. So if they're coming in and I'm going this way, they've turned me so we can kind of scoot around the outside of each other. Okay, Yankee Zulu, turn left heading 350. Left 350, okay, Yankee Zulu. Echo Yankee Zulu, resume our navigation, direct Mangalore. Oh, navigation, direct Mangalore, Echo Yankee Zulu. So, that's dead easy on here. I just go to flight plan. I find Mangalore. I go direct. I go activate. And then I come down here to GPS steering. 5,000, And then you can see on the G500 TXIs here, I've now got this nice straight path to Mangalore. My original flight plan had me going to Melbourne and then across. 
but I've managed to cut out this whole corner because we're out of the way of all the landing traffic that's coming into Melbourne International now. That's my 1,000 foot call out, so I've just passed 7,000 feet. I've got 1,000 feet to go until I get to, well, 8,000. That's, you know, 8 minus 7 is 1. It's lovely up here. Echo Yankee Zulu, contact departures 118.9. 118 118.9, Echo Yankee Zulu. Hey, hey. Steven, Jag just checking in. Yeah, I'm here, mate. Damn, you got the corner cut. Yeah, I was quite lucky. They um, had me at 3,000, then let me cut the corner direct Mangalore. So I'm 8,000, uh, just a beam. Well, just about 10 miles north of Melbourne now. Yeah, I finally got clearance, so I've, I'm on clock seven and a half, just past Sugarloaf, heading to Langford. Yeah, it looks like you're a beam, me, Steph. I've had to go over the top. Plus 880, contact Melbourn, set up one, two, three, day, small, seven, five, good eight. We're pretty much in line with each other. 97, climb to one, zero, thousand. I'm going to be underneath you pretty soon, I think, Stephen, looking at this. You're in um, controlled airspace. I'm out of it now. Yeah, it looks like we're going to sort of merge not far from Mangalore. On a normal day, if it wasn't for flying with other people, I don't think I would have done this flight. If it was just me, in fact, no, I shouldn't say that. I'm trying to be all heroic. If it was just me on my own, I wouldn't have done this flight today, but because I'm here with friends, that's the What's your uh, ETA to Wangaratta? I've got 0208 for Wangaratta. How about you? 0201. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to be a Wangaratta 03, so I'm going to be in front of you guys. Yeah, it looks like on those timings it's um, Jack, then you, then me. And it's little things like that as well, just having the reassurance of, reassurance of friends in the air with you as well, just to... Like, now I know that Jack's going to get to a waypoint first, then Stephen's there, and then it's me, and we can kind of share information. I think I'm finding, the older I get, it's not just with my flying, but in all walks of my life, as I progress through life, I'm realising more and more that if I do things with other people, I generally tend to enjoy them more. And for someone like me, who's a bit of a loner, and really enjoys and embraces my own solitude to push myself beyond my comfort zone it can't be a bad thing for me right, I'm on way down now, Steph. yeah copied I'm gonna start my descent soonish as well definitely some cloud over the Mount Beauty way uh, near the mountain our destination today is a place called Mount Beauty and it's kind of over there where all those clouds are so we're gonna see if we can um, get underneath them and now I'm just starting a descent down to, I've gone 4,500 because that will get me underneath the airspace in Albury. It also means that hopefully I can get underneath the clouds that are up ahead and have a look underneath them to see what it looks like, whether we can get down the valley and land at this airport called Mount Beauty. Or whether we don't. And if we don't, we'll come out of there and um, go somewhere else, maybe somewhere like Wangaratta or Albury instead. We've all got plenty of fuel and we built a lot of contingency into today's flight to, to allow us to make those sorts of decisions. I can see a little gap to fit through at Cancuna. I might ha have give that a go. Yeah, it looks like it's a pretty straight valley, so if you can get through it, if you can see through it, you'll be able to get through it. Let's get rid of the autopilot and hand fly this one in. So I think you want the left hand valley from here, don't you, Jack? Oh, yeah. And I'm just on the south, at south end of Vertiford now, Steph. Okay, thank you, mate. I'm about three minutes away from it. And yeah, you want to go left on that one, yeah? And then up to the substation and down. Yeah, as you get to Vernonhood, there, it's a bigger valley, and then yeah, up to up towards the main valley we're trying to get to. Okay, thank you. I'm going to slow a fair bit, Steph. I'm going to come back to about one, 120 knots or so. Sounds good. What indicator speed are you, Jack? I'm 135, and I'm just slowing down now. Yeah, so I'm just going to try and stay behind you, so. What a nice part of the world to be flying in. It is very pretty. How's your train system going, Steph? I'm just waiting for it to go off, actually. It's all right now, but with that big peak up in front of me, it's going to start scream, screaming in a minute. Whereabouts are you guys at the moment? Overhead Cancun, basically at the end of the valley, almost about to turn right towards Mount Beauty. OK, good. Yeah, you're still, still way ahead of me. Caution. Terrain. Terrain. And terrain inhibited. <laughs> Mount Beauty traffic, Cirrus Kilo, Jill is currently in a group of three aeroplanes. One zero miles to the north, 2,000 feet. Inbound estimating circuit time, 1-8, Mount Beauty. I might have the runway. That's confidence inspiring. <laughs> <laughs>
Duty traffic, Seminole and the member of Alphas, clear of the runway, taxiing to the end node. Are you both able to wait at the end? Yeah, I'm down, I'm trying to roll through the end quick player. You're all good, you've got time. Our beauty traffic, OK, Zulu, short final, runway 14, full stop. Our beauty. I know they'll watch this afterwards, so thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Jack. Thanks for encouraging me to come out and be brave today. That was so good. This is like flying in Europe. That was just like landing in the Alps. I didn't even know we had places like this in Australia. First time for me at this airport. What an achievement. I feel really good.